Eve is uh, coming from uh, camp to camp. And um, yeah, he is um, uh, he's working as a project manager and team leader as camp to camp in Switzerland. And he works for camp to camp since 2004. So one really of the experienced guys, I would say. And uh, he's the leader for the WebGIS project GeoMapFish, and he's going to talk about GeoMapFish and QGIS server. And uh, Eve prepared a video, and um, yeah, I'm trying to share that now. Uh, Eve, maybe you can mute yourself, um, yes. because there's a little noise in the background. And um, yeah, thank you very much. And uh, let's try whether that works. And here's your stage. So hello, my name is uh, Yves Bolognini. I'm a project manager at Camp to Camp. I will talk to you today about uh, GeoMapFish and the uh, server uh, with GeoMapFish. So first, I will talk about uh, GeoMapFish, uh, the, 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 the framework GeoMapFish, um, and then about the use of QGIS with GeoMapFish. I will do a quick demo, and um, then I will talk to, um, further about the, the access control plugin uh, to, to, to use uh, QGIS and GeoMapFish with uh, right management. Just a quick word about uh, camp to camp So camp to camp is an open source uh, company in Switzerland and uh, three, uh, two other countries. And we are uh, now more than uh, 120 employees. Um, we have several departments, so geospatial, but also uh, business solutions, so about uh, ERPs and uh, uh, um, company management, and um, infrastructure, and also uh, subscriptions. We have services for consulting, uh, implementation, uh, support, maintenance, and also training. is so open source project um, customizable customizable we'll see, uh, um, how we can customize it um, it uses uh, ogc uh, sources um, it has a desktop as you can see here the desktop interface it has also a mobile interface with uh, less uh, features to be uh, more simple for mobile interfaces and also a quite powerful uh, administration interface uh, to configure everything about the uh, application. About the architecture, so it uses open layers on the front end. Um, as I said, OGC sources. And the back end, it uses uh, mostly Python and Pyramid. And as uh, the, the map engines, it uses Map Server, uh, of course, QGIS, as I said before, and uh, GeoServer. Um, it is based on Docker um, and also uses Kubernetes for production. As database, we have uh, mostly uh, PostgreSQL and PostGIS for the GIS part. About the community of GeoMapFish, so uh, GeoMapFish is a community-driven project. Um, as I said, it's a WebGIS solution with a community of more than 20 members and a project steering committee. Um, in the project steering committee, there are um, Swiss cantons, cities, uh, some engineering office, so the pri private sector, and also uh, some members like uh, Swiss Federal Institute of Technology, etc. Camp to Camp is part of the community as the editor of the solution. The goals of the, the community is to ensure a sustainable development of the solution. So to promote dialogue between the members, uh, to have uh, decision making, to, to know about the roadmap, what, what we want to do in the solution, 
uh, specifications. Uh, also, uh, fair funding, so it means that um, everybody must be uh, happy with the funding and the, the, with the, the development linked to this funding. Um, and so the, the, the goal also is to have a large uh, community to keep the contribution level low uh, between the, the members. This model works quite well since uh, 2011. Status of the project. So the version 2.6 is, um, is quite recent. It was, it was out in July this year. Um, and uh, there is now a roadmap to get rid of AngularJS because we, do, we still use AngularJS that is uh, soon deprecated. And so um, the roadmap uh, includes a proof of concept using uh, web components. It will be the new architecture of uh, GeoMapFish. Um, in 2022, uh, we will have a 2.7 with uh, support of uh, web components. Uh, then the migration of the components will start uh, with a 2.8 in 2023 and 2024. There will be this version 3 with no Angular JS. You have here the, the website, the website of the, of the, the, the community, a website of the documentation and the demo for the 2.6 uh, version. Okay, I will do now a quick demo of GeoMapFish. Okay, so here we have the, the desktop uh, interface of uh, GeoMapFish 2.6. Um, so on the left side, you have the layers, the layer tree. Um, with a group of layers and here the, the themes. So I can choose a new theme here and display different layers like this. Uh, below here are the background layers. So I can choose different backgrounds. Um, here I can connect to another uh, user if I want. Here I will stay with the admin uh, user, so I can use the editing feature. So I will show you the editing feature here, for instance with polygons. I can use here, click on a polygon and have the attributes I want to edit here. So we can print everything using another um, Product that is uh, Mapfish Print, another open source product, um, to, to generate uh, either an image or a PDF. There are some measures and uh, drawings features like drawing a circle, change the colors, etc. etc. Here is a powerful uh, filter. Uh, feature you can choose a layer here and add a filter like a special filter okay and apply filter and so it is applied on the map editing we already saw it profile and draw a line here and have the profile. Yeah, and, and maybe I can show you also that we can share everything using a link or by sending an email. There is also um, oops, um, a search feature here. using full text search, etc. Uh, wanted to show you also um, the possibility to have a highly customizable uh, uh, interface. And so for this, I will switch to another uh, project. I te laisserai couper aussi.
So this is an example of a Joma fish with a highly customized uh, interface. Uh, it is for the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology. And so we can, we still have here the, the layers, but I, as you can see, it doesn't look at all like uh, the demo. Um, you can of course choose different layers also. And one interesting feature with this project also is that uh, it is on the buildings level and not on the like uh, uh, country level. And so uh, there is a feature to uh, choose the, 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 the floor of the building. So if I change like this, I can go up to the, the different rooms and have interaction with the rooms, like uh, clicking on it, etc. As you can see, everything is really customized, and on the left, we also have a, a set of tools. They even added a, a, a routing feature that is specific for, uh, for this project. Now about QG Server. So QG Server is a powerful RGC data server. Um, it has uh, a WYSIWYG layers configuration that is very useful, uh, white symbolization and labeling options. Uh, it's data source agnostic. Uh, we can use any data source. And it has uh, easy data publication. You can just upload um, one single file to the server and have the new configuration. Um, and I will show later that we have the possibility to have the access control configuration in GeoMapFish for QGIS server. Uh, one advantage of QGIS server also, uh, if you compare it to Map Server, is to have a um, high DP legend. So about the access control, what are the needs? So the needs are to have a control, a fine grain control, to have uh, an external authentication and user management for uh, the QGIS data, the QGIS server, uh, data coming through QGIS server. Um, and we want to have a security filter at the data level and not at the output level, not at the level of the OGC response. So the data is really on, uh, the security is really on the data. So here is the architecture of the um, um, access control we have with QGIS server and GeoMapFish. So the OJC request is coming uh, either from Jomapfish or from uh, QGIS desktop. And we have the user authentication coming here. And so um, we have first a map serve proxy that is part, a component part of Jomapfish. Uh, and with the user authentication, it adds roles to the request and sends it to uh, QGIS server. QG server then has another uh, component that is um, done by Countercomp is the plugin. The plugin will use the roles information and get the information about the rights in the rights management database of GeoMapFish. Using this, we can construct a filter, so a QG server, a standard filter, um, to access the data and get back the, the data to the the, uh, the client. So this uh, plugins for right management uh, my, uh, for right management is di directly in the Docker image that is proposed by uh, Camp to Camp. So advantages uh, of having this access control. Um, first, as I said before, the data, the, the filtering is on the data and not on the response, so it's more uh, secure. Um, we can have all the right management that are in um, GeoMapFish, so uh, for instance, uh, having uh, rights per layer and per role, so it's fine grained. Um, we can have read and read write, read write uh, writes. Um, we can filter and edit per area. 
we can, uh, I will show it in the demo just after that. Uh, and everything is configurable in the Germafish uh, admin interface. And one important fact also is that this right management doesn't interfere with uh, the other OJC sources of uh, Germafish. And so um, it is not something that is uh, specific, it just adds something and the other OJC sources are standard. So now a quick demo of how it works with the, this um, right management and QJ server. So this is uh, again the, the demo application for Geomapfish. So I will uh, add a layer that is called Restrain here. With um, a number of points here on Lausanne. Um, I'm logged here as a, an admin, so I can see all the points. Uh, all these points come from a QG server. And so if I disconnect and connect with another, another um, user, okay, I'm on Lausanne again, and I add the layer and as you can see, there is an, only a part of the, um, of the points that are displayed uh, on the east of Lausanne. And this is because we have an area uh, configured in the admin interface of Geomapfish. This area is sent um, to QGIS server via the plugin and so used to have uh, QGIS server filters on the data. So now about a summary of what we saw. So, uh, so you use of QGIS first um, uh, as a backend for uh, Geomapfish. So the advantages, uh, first the, the WYSIWYG layers configuration, uh, we have this wide symbolization and labeling options, and um, easy data integration from uh, several sources. About the access control, we have this fine-grained rights control, and the fact that uh, the rights management is compatible with um, other OJC sources. So I thank you for the attention. And uh, here we have the, the link to first to Camp to Camp, Geomafish, and again about uh, the documentation of and demo of Geomafish uh, 2.6. Thank you very much, Eve, for your presentation, for the tool you presented, which is really impressive. And um, we already have two questions. And um, the first question is, what use cases do you see GeoMapfish providing value in compared to open layers or leaflet or other geomapping applications? Mm -hmm. OK. so. Um, Yes, Geomapfish does use uh, open layers as, a, uh, as, as the main library for displaying maps. But uh, of course, Geomapfish adds a lot of uh, other features. And uh, the fact that it is a framework that you can take your different uh, uh, paths and decide what we will, you will use uh, in your application. Uh, also, as you saw in the um, demonstration, you have uh, uh, the possibility to have a high, highly customizable uh, interface, uh, like I said, with the, for the, the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology, and all this is uh, ready to use as a framework. Okay, thank you on that. Um, uh, sorry for the audience. Um, there is. Uh, little noise in the background we didn't get that out but i think you can clearly uh, follow what eve says and there's another question um it's a little bit also the experience we had in the past uh, it's always hard to change basic libraries as you started uh, when when you talk with and does the angular js issue block you from more innovations and if so how Yes, um, actually it doesn't block uh, us, but uh, it's really uh, a big issue, of course. 
And uh, with the with the user group, um, Jumakish user group, uh, as I said, uh, it's a community driven project. So we have a user group, and this user with the user group, we had a, a, a long discussion of uh, what we want to do with this problem of Angular JS, and. Um, uh, what we decided is to follow this roadmap I was talking about um, and to 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 go slowly to uh, a new uh, version with, without AngularJS. So I wouldn't say it blocks us, but it's, uh, uh, really, it slows us, uh, us of course, because uh, during the time that we work on, uh, on this uh, migration, we don't add new features. And of course, it, it takes also a lot of budgets to uh, to migrate, so we don't have the budget for the features. <laughs> yeah, a, a, a lot of work to do and a lot of money yeah. to earn, so not too bad. No, no. Uh, <laughs> another question um, came up: uh, How easy to change the base map layers? Base map layers. Uh, so it is quite easy actually. We use the, um, the administration interface that we have in, uh, in Jumapfish. Um, and uh, it's just uh, click, click, and you, you can change the base map layers and change the source for the base map. So, uh, so it's very, very, very easy. We, we changed the admin interface uh, quite recently, and now it is something uh, it is very user friendly. Perfect. So, if no more questions, I think you did a really, really good presentation, <laughs> and I really would like to thank you. And yes, yeah, we thank you very much again. And we proceed in a couple of minutes, and uh, we have a short break before we start with the next talk, which will be the talk of Andrea Amy. And uh, yeah, it's time to get a coffee, a beer, whatever. Thank you, Eve, again. My pleasure. And, um, I'm, I'm quite sure if there are more questions, they probably put them in the chat or you contact Eve directly. Yes, excellent. Let's bring it.